hello there. Hi, my name is Megan Goss, and I uh, work as a Michigan Sea Grant Extension Educator uh, in Michigan, um, getting to serve with the Great Lakes Basin, and just been writing a little bit here about why I love the Great Lakes so much. Writing is a great way to explore your thoughts. You can journal them down like you would in a diary. You can also write down your feelings to help you feel better. I do that sometimes in my journal. Um, I also use writing as a way to remember experiences. And if I don't know what words to use, I use pictures. And sometimes I share what I write and sometimes I don't. And sometimes this is a way for me to reflect and think back on happier times and times when I was with family and with friends. So we wanted to share this as a part of our Homes at Home series, where we're exploring the Great Lakes from the comforts of our home um, through different activities. And today we'll be focusing on writing, films, and poetry. Now, before we dive in to films and writing, I wanted to give a deeper dive back into the Great Lakes because it's important to understand before we can write. So as we transition to that, I wanted to reflect back on our homes. Um, so in our series, Homes at Homes, we are uh, focusing on the Great Lakes and acronyms are a great uh, way to remember our Great Lakes. So HOMES stand for Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. There are different ways that we can um, remember our Great Lakes. HOMES is a helpful way to remember and as we've introduced the Great Lakes in other days, we've done them in different ways. So today we're going to be exploring the Great Lakes with our shoreline. So here's a cool map um, that was developed by Michigan Sea Grant that highlights the Great Lakes Basin. And we're going to guess which lake, going from the least amount of shoreline to the most amount of shoreline. And our shoreline means the area that's surrounding, the land area that's surrounding a lake, um, and it does also include islands. So which lake do we think has the least amount of shoreline out of the Great Lakes? Any guesses? Lake Ontario! Yes, with 712 miles or 1,146 kilometers. I almost gave away the rest of the answers. Which lake do you think has the fourth uh, most shoreline in the Great Lakes? So more shoreline than Lake Ontario and less shoreline than the other three Great Lakes. If you guess Lake Erie, you're right. So that has a shoreline of 871 miles or 1,402 kilometers. Next, which lake has the third most shoreline out of the Great Lakes? Yep. You guessed it. If you guessed Lake Michigan, um, that has 1,640 miles of shoreline or 2,639 kilometers. Again, this includes islands. So next we have our last two lakes. Which one has the second most amount of shoreline? It's Lake Superior with 2,726 miles um, or 4,385 kilometers. That leaves our last lake, which is Lake Huron, which has 3,830 miles of shoreline um, or 6,164 kilometers. Uh, so that makes it have the most shoreline in the Great Lakes. And I see now that we're connected on Facebook Live. So welcome everyone to the live stream. My name's Megan Goss. Um, I serve as a Michigan Sea Grant Extension Educator and I was just introducing the Great Lakes as a part of our Homes at Home series by Shoreline, where we learned um, going in the order from least shoreline to most shoreline. It goes Lake Ontario, then Lake Erie, Lake Michigan, 
Lake Superior and Lake Huron. It's important to remember with shoreline and our lakes, we're also counting the islands. And Lake Huron has over 20,000 islands. In total, our Great Lakes have about 11,000 miles of shoreline. And that converts to over 17,000 kilometers. There's a lot of ways to enjoy the Great Lakes. So for those that were joining in on the live stream, you may not have heard what today's theme is. It's Great Lakes, Great Films, Great Writers, where we'll be exploring the Great Lakes through writing, poetry, and films. So to kick off after um, we give a, to kick off our um, discussion, I wanted to give a review of why is it important to write. So writing is something that everyone can do. You can um, use writing as a way to journal your thoughts. You can write your feelings down to feel better. You can also use writing as a tool to remember past experiences. And you don't always have to write to be able to reflect. You can use drawings or other forms of creativity to be able to share your thoughts about the Great Lakes. And sometimes I share what I write and other times I don't. Sometimes I keep it just for myself. So now I want to share a poem that was written by one of my friends, Todd Marcy, who works for Michigan Sea Grant as the graphic designer. He also writes poetry on the side. So here's a poem Todd wrote. Roses are red, the Great Lakes are blue. Even though I'm stuck at home, I dream of days when I can paddle through. That's a fun poem, Todd. And I can't wait to go out and explore the Great Lakes and all of the shorelines. In addition, in our Great Lakes, they're filled with a lot of biodiversity. Now, what does biodiversity mean? It means a lot of different life. Does anyone have any guesses on how many different kinds of plants and animals live in the Great Lakes Basin? It's a lot. Yes, more than 3,500 species of plants and animals. And that clue includes 170 species of fish. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And if we think about our Great Lakes, they really aren't that old of a, of a system. They are the largest surface freshwater system on the planet, but they've only been around for about 10,000 years. They were shaped by glaciers then. But we are very lucky to have the Great Lakes because they provide us with fresh water and then also access to so many different um, plants and animals that we can enjoy while enjoying the shoreline. So another um, part of our Great Lakes that we can think about is its maritime history. So with maritime history, we're focusing on vessels that may have sailed on the Great Lakes or ocean. In Lake Huron, there is Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, which is the first freshwater national marine sanctuary in the country, and it's there to preserve shipwrecks. Our maritime history connects us back to a growing America, and it connects us back to everyday people whose lives might not be covered in history books. With the turn of the 20th century in the late 1800s and early 1900s, our Great Lakes were filled with many vessels that were transporting people and goods like iron ore and timber. It helped to develop America and make us into the nation that we are today, along with Canada, because this is a shared resource between two nations. And in addition, um, on the Great Lakes today, we can find many shipwrecks that connect back to that history. In fact, there are about 6,000 shipwrecks that can be found throughout the Great Lakes Basin. And Today, I'm going to read you a poem, a haiku, that was written by my friend, Stephanie Gandula, who's a maritime archaeologist from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Fog, waves, wind and ice, schooners, steamers, scows and souls, Huron has its price. Wow. 
So now we're going to continue to explore this theme of maritime history um, by watching a film that was developed by Alpena High School students for the Thunder Bay International Film Festival student film competition. The 2020 theme was Great Lakes R. And the first place and People's Choice Award film, His Boots Are Empty, shares a story um, of our maritime history of, out in the Great Lakes. So Geneva, if you can share that film now, that would be great. It's been three days. He hasn't come home for dinner. His boots are empty. His reading chair too. Mom is upset. I have to go find him. He could be out skiing, like he always is. Maybe he's out hunting. Or cutting firewood. Or working under the car. He could have gotten lost underground. gotten abducted by aliens. Maybe he isn't coming home. Ma'am. We went to open the lighthouse 11 miles off Sheboygan. The door was broken down. He left this. We searched, but his plane and his body were not recovered. I'm sorry. I was heading back to Alpena. The champ started to pitch up uncontrollably. The nose was pointed straight up. I kicked the rudder over, trying to save the plane by doing a hammerhead. It was no use. The elevator control linkages must have snapped. The plane hit the lake and went underwater within a minute, but I managed to shimmy my way out of the cockpit. I had seen the lighthouse from the sky, and I swam to it and broke inside. I was freezing and I used reserve blankets to warm up. I tried to use the transmitter, but the batteries were old. I used the main light to flash signals, but no one came. It's been two days. I have no choice but to find a way home. From the chart, I will have 11 miles to travel. There is enough furniture to build a small raft. However, the waves are rough this time of year and it may not last long. If the raft fails, I'll swim. Please forgive me for making a mess of the building. Amelia, Grace, I love you both. I'll see you soon.
Wow, that was a powerful film. And it showcases that the Great Lakes have many stories to tell. And it's important to remember that these are connected sometimes back to family histories and sometimes tragedies. Now, our next film was the People's Choice Award winner from the first year of the student film competition. This upcoming year will be the sixth annual student film competition. So this has been going on for quite some time. And the theme for the first year was Water Is. And this film was developed by Roger City High School students um, up in Presqu'ile County in Michigan. Enjoy. Water is life. The human body is 75% water. Water is essential for all living things. Water is overpowering. There are over 332 billion cubic miles of water on the earth. Water is strong. When water freezes, it turns into ice. And that's solid. Water is fun. There's many outdoor activities that involve water. Water is flowing. There are over 250,000 rivers in the United States that cover 3,500,000 miles. Water is a career. Water helps provide jobs for millions of people worldwide. Water is destructive. Water can cause erosion and damage anything in its path. Water is interesting. Water dissolves more substances than any other liquid. 68% of the fresh water on Earth is trapped in glaciers. Water is helpful. Water helps grow crops and prepare food. Water is beautiful. Wow, I always enjoy watching that movie. So as you can see from these two films that there are lots of ways that you can convey messages through filmmaking. It can be a helpful tool for processing grief. It can be a helpful way for writing down opportunity or writing down your feelings when you might be sad or not sure of what to do next. So when you are uncertain, Always look to writing as a way of being able to focus and figure out next steps and reflect on your life. So next, I wanted to share um, my screen and show you um, the promotion for the 
upcoming sixth annual student film competition. Um, this is a part of the Thunder Bay International Film Festival's um, annual festival, which is a partnership with the San Francisco Ocean Film Festival. It takes place in Alpena, Michigan, every year in January, where they show great ocean and Great Lakes inspired films. And as a part of this, they have a student film competition. And the 2021 theme is Freshwater Is. So if you're home and looking for something fun to do, um, this could be a great opportunity. You can learn more by visiting nemiglsi.org. And if you haven't gotten enough films from today, we also have our Lake Effects film series, which takes place tonight at 7 p.m. Um, this has been part of a digital film series supported by Michigan Sea Grant and our University of Michigan office. And you can join the live stream at 7 p.m. And if you want to check out past films, you can see those on our Michigan Sea Grant webpage. Tonight's theme is invaders. So you can explore more about invasive species and the impacts that they are having on the Great Lakes with the feature film, Making Waves, Battle for the Great Lakes. Now, um, I wanna conclude today by launching our challenge. And the challenge for today is to develop a write a poem or write a story or write down your feelings about the Great Lakes. Um, you, if you don't enjoy writing, you can also draw a picture or you can try to make a film using your cell phone or a video camera. Um, this is a great way to challenge yourself and think about um, the Great Lakes in different ways. And if you don't have a lot of experiences on the Great Lakes, or near the Great Lakes, you can always um, write about a nearby river or stream or your favorite park or where you like to go outside. Um, this is an exercise to really explore writing and we have some tools that we will be sharing um, to help you with writing any poetry or short stories. And before we go into our questions, I wanted to share a poem that I wrote. So this is an anagram that follows the homes. So each letter in my poem starts with the letter H-O-M-E-S. And at the end of my poem, the words don't rhyme. So poems don't always have to rhyme, they can, and you can use lots of different styles. So here's my poem. Home to many, one system of magnificent waters. Enjoy the waves, support, it's life. So that was my dedication to the Great Lakes, the largest surface freshwater system on this planet. So um, with that, I want to thank you all for tuning in. And now we have some time for questions. Hey, everybody. This is Geneva. I'm tuning in from Ann Arbor. I'm Megan's co-worker with Michigan Sea Grant. And I'm going to be asking her some of your questions. And since we got a little bit of a late start this morning, we're gonna let the question and answer time go a little bit later. So a haiku earlier today, Megan, can you tell us a little bit about how you write haikus? Yes, I definitely can. So I actually have a handy dandy instruction sheet for this. So um, a haiku um, is, uh, haikus are from Japan and the structure of a traditional haiku is always the same and includes the following features. There are only three lines totaling to 17 syllables. The first line is five syllables. And a syllable is how um, you might break up a word. So for instance, syllable. There are three syllables in syllable. Um, so the first line is five syllables. Then the second line is seven syllables. And the third line is five syllables. Punctuation and capitalization is up to the poet. So you can decide how you would like to add those in. And they don't need to follow rigid rules that you would do on like standard sentences. And haikus, they don't have to rhyme. In fact, they usually don't rhyme at all. 
And it can include uh, the repetition of words or sounds. And often, um, haikus are used to write about nature. I, I like writing haikus too because I like the structure, the five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. It really helps me to figure out what I need to put in the words. And sometimes I, I switch out different words when writing. Yeah, sometimes structure is really helpful in, in giving you some rules to find creativity inside. Um, yes. And if you decide that the rules are too, too much or too hard to follow, then leave them behind for a little while. There's a lot of different ways to write. Exactly. So, and that's one of the great things about poetry. And you can even use poems to write songs. So one of my favorite songs about the Great Lakes, which I, when I asked people about what can we write, what should I share, was this song by Gordon Lightfoot, the Edmund Fitzgerald. So if you haven't heard that song, I definitely recommend checking it out. But that's a great example of a, a really a, a poem and a song that connects back to the Great Lakes. So if I could sing, I would, I would totally achieve it. <laughs> I bet there will be a lot of people looking that one up on YouTube when we're done today. I hope so. It's a great song. So in our, in that second film, Water Is, we saw a lot of different types of water, a lot of different ways to describe water. Do you have a favorite type or description of water that rings truest for you? So for me, when I think of water, I think of life. Um, is Water is essential for life, and it is what connects all of us. Water is in our bodies, water is in all around us, and we need water to survive. So when I think of water, that's what I think of first, is life. Um, and then after that, I think about all of the other connections to it. But water is really cool, and I loved in that video how they showed some of the different states of water. That is one of the neatest things, is how it can change from a liquid to a solid to a gas. Yes, a lot of a lot of different moods and ways to see and experience not just the Great Lakes, but even rivers and streams and puddles, things we find around our homes. Yeah, and one thing um, that you can do too if you're trying to explore your local place is find out your watershed. So you can see in this map behind me, this is a map of the Great Lakes Basin. So where I live, all of the land in my watershed, which is all the land that will drain into a water body, um, so a nearby river and stream will flow into the Great Lakes. So you can even map your watershed and figure out and share that in a poem or story too. That's great. So we've got a question. Um, if people want to submit a film for the film competition, what was that website again where they can do that? Yeah, I'll share my screen again. Um, so it was the, um, the Northeast Michigan Great Lakes Stewardship Initiative. Um, they have the project page on there. So if you visit nemiglsi.org, you can um, submit a film. And you can also see other student films. So um, the themes for past years have been water is, exploration is, biodiversity is, uh, Great Lakes are. And these themes are actually decided by the students that entered from the past year's um, student film competition. And they feature stories um, from not just the Great Lakes. So we even had one student um, who was an exchange student from Georgia, the country, who um, developed a film about her um, experiences with biodiversity. Great. And Thunder Bay, the organization that hosts this film festival every year, one of the things that they're most known for is their amazing collection of shipwrecks. They have so many shipwrecks that you can go learn about and even explore. Yes, yeah, they do. A couple, a couple people are wondering, how many shipwrecks are there in the Great Lakes? So they what's our best guess? They estimate that there's about 6,000 shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. And in Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, it's a protected 4,300 square mile area in um, northwestern Lake Huron. And it's there to preserve shipwrecks. Um, I believe that there are about 90 shipwrecks that um, are found within the boundaries of the sanctuary. Um, and throughout the Great Lakes, we have many stories um, that connect back to shipwrecks. And it's something that you can explore and learn about um, and even another one of the Great Lakes are student films 
was uh, featuring a shipwreck from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, the Portland, which is a great one that you can snorkel and explore um, easily from the shore. And I have a video uh, movie recommendation for anybody who's interested in shipwrecks. There is a really cool movie called Project Ship Hunt. Yes. That was students who were given a really awesome project to try to figure out where some missing shipwrecks, way to learn a little bit about how to find these shipwrecks, and how they explored them. So um, you can look that one up. I think it was on Vimeo. Maybe you could also find a link on YouTube, but it's a really great one. Yes, it definitely is and features some great stories from students from um, down near uh, Saginaw, Michigan, I believe, too. Uh, so here's a question from our Facebook audience. Are the islands in Lake Huron more on the Michigan side or the Canadian side? Um, I don't know for certain, but I would guess that they're more on the Canadian side near Georgian Bay. Um, I have been able to visit some of the islands that are um, out on the American side. So for instance, Big Charity Island is um, part of the um, National uh, Wildlife Refuge and is managed by US Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, and it's been an island that has been studied actually by fourth graders from all Grace Sims School District. They go out every single year and they map pitchers thistle, a federally threatened plant. So there's a lot of unique um, stories that we can learn from these islands. And there was even a Great Lakes Now film that featured the story of um, different students traveling from island to island as part of a basketball competition. Yeah, that's a pretty cool film. And you can find that one on YouTube if you look up Great Lakes Now Island Basketball. That's a pretty cool one. Also, the link to that is on our Homes at Home uh, webpage, where you'll find recordings for all of the sessions that we're running this week, as well as a whole bunch of other cool video resources. So we are coming up on the end of our extended time. Um, and I guess we'll close with one more question from our, our Q&A box. Thanks to everyone who sent them in. There's a lot more here than we could get to, um, but your curiosity is very much appreciated. So a couple people wondered, Megan, do you have a favorite Great Lake? Um, yes, I do. Uh, I would say it's probably Lake Huron. Most of my experiences, I've been able to visit every single Great Lake. I was even able to visit every single Great Lake in less than 24 hours as part of a cool visit and journey. But I would definitely say Lake Huron. I um, love all the five Great Lakes, but most of my experiences, I've lived um, in Michigan. All of my experiences of living here have been on those shorelines. And it's a great lake to explore. And I'm hoping I can make it over to Georgian Bay soon because I feel like I'm missing out on a lot of Lake Huron since I haven't visited there yet. Lots more to explore. Well, we are going to end it there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for your patience at the beginning of the video. Uh, we will be back again this time tomorrow. Same link, same place with the last of our weekly activities. And if you feel like sending us some of your pictures, we'd love to see pictures of what you're working on, or maybe you can send us your poems. Um, you can send those to us through Facebook at Michigan Sea Grant's Facebook page. Um, we would love to find out what you've been doing. And if you know anybody who's interested in these videos and hasn't been able to watch them in real time, they are all being uploaded to our YouTube channel and we're linking to them on our Homes at Home webpage. So look on our Facebook page for that link. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone.